Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here. Today I am going to show you how you can calculate running totals inside of Power BI. Now, there's actually a couple of ways you can do it. So I'm gonna show you both ways, um, but this is ultimately what, uh, what, what we will get as a result. So what I've done is I've got um, you know, my, my sales by date, and I've created a 30 day running total and a 90 day running total. And then I put them into visualizations and then we can actually change, uh, we can check, we can change the time frame, and our running total is going to showcase. It's quite a compelling insight, right? Um, you know, especially if you're, you know, you're looking at things like inventory um, or accounts receivable or something like that. You know, this is a really good piece of analysis that you can run over the top of that um, that data, and then you can even branch out into, into more, um, more, more advanced things like comparing your. Uh, running totals at one period versus another period. So many different things you can do. Um, it's a really awesome technique. So I'm going to show you how you can how you can achieve this from uh, what we've got here from scratch. So okay, so starting from a blank uh, blank report, basically all I've got is my total sales. I'm going to write a measure that gives me my 30 day uh, running total. So I want to for any date look back uh, from today, back 30 days, and then sum up all of the sales within that time period, within that 30 day time period. So I'm gonna create another measure here, and I'm gonna call this um, 30, I'm gonna call this running total, running total 30 days. I'm gonna go equals, and then I'm gonna jump down to another line because we've got a bit of logic to write in here. So I'm gonna go calculate, and total sales, then I'm going to use the filter function because the filter function is a iterating function. And basically, I want to iterate through the date table to the, in, to capture to capture these 30 days uh, for the running total. So I'm going to filter. Then I'm going to go all, and then I'm going to remove any filter or any context coming from any date uh, date column. And in this case, I'm getting rid of the context and the date. Uh, the date column, which is uh, what is being derived from here. So all gets rid of that context or gets rid of that filter. And then I'm gonna iterate uh, via this filter function. I'm gonna iterate through the entire date table and I'm gonna see if the date is uh, greater than max date minus 30 because that's what's gonna get us uh, to the first day of the 30 days. And then I'm gonna go double ampersand, and then I'm gonna evaluate, well, is the date also less than or equal to, uh, actually less than or equal to the max date. Now the max date is just gonna be equal to the actual, it's always gonna equal the date here. So if you just uh, typed in a measure or a, or a function that said max date and you put it against this context, it's always gonna evaluate to the day. So <clears throat> then I'm going to just close this off and go enter and drag this into my table and you'll see that this will evaluate to a running total now. So if I just change this into a dollar, um, dollar, number, dollar figure and you'll see now that through time, this is evaluating uh, 30 days on the run. It's evaluating from it's evaluating from here 30 days back, from here, from here 30 days back, here 30 days back. So that's how you get your running total. And say you wanted to get a different time frame, well, it's the same. It's the same pattern. All you got to do is copy and paste. So you say we might want 90 days, something like that. Um, then you would just change this from 30 to 90, and just like that we've got a running total for 90 days instead. And that's obviously going to evaluate to something slightly different because we're uh, looking at sales over a longer time frame or, or, or a metric over a longer time frame. Because remember also you can sub in a different measure here. It could be profits, it could be transactions, it could be customers. There's lots of different things that you could, um, that you could implement there. Now I just wanna show you another formula that you can write to achieve exactly the same thing. And it's using just a different um, logic, different filtering logic inside of the calculate statement. So I'm gonna call this the running running total, running total 30 days, uh, I'll just call, put alt uh, for alternative. And I'm just gonna go calculate total sales. And then instead of filter, I'm gonna use this function called dates in period. Um, if I, uh, date in or dates in period, yep. And then I'm just gonna jump down to another column, another row here and I'm gonna go date. 
So it just asks me for the date. So what dates and period basically does is it opens up, it allows you to put some variables or the variables open up um, a time period. So it's a, sp a specific time intelligence function and you can create or open up any time period that you want. Um, you've just got to put in the parameters and so I'm just gonna put in my parameters here so it basically does what that filter does. It's just a different way of um, writing it, maybe a slightly easier way, um, I would say, and you've got a lot more flexibility. So here, I'm just gonna jump back 30 days, and you'll see that you've got all these options that you can select um, for, you can jump back, say, a month, um, a year. So instead of 30 days, maybe we might actually have wanted to go back one month, and I could have gone minus one month, but in this case, I'm just gonna keep it at 30 days, and I'm just gonna go enter. And if I put this next to my other 30 day, you'll see that it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same as uh, the one that we use in filter. It's just another way of achieving this a similar result. So there's some good techniques there, some good techniques that you can implement yourself. Now, all that we would need to do from here basically is to turn it into a visualization, which doesn't take long. Um, and then we can see uh, running total in a visual way and then you can add different filters so say for instance you want to um, only look at a particular year here so say I just want to look at 2017 easy as that the the the, uh, the running total adjusts for whatever other additional context that you put inside your um, report page so there you have it that's how you do the running total lots and lots of applications for this and you could extend this even further it's pretty exciting how how far you could actually extend that um, but um, you know, at the end of the day, it's the same techniques, the same pattern. You can reuse, reuse it over and over again.